Another Friday, another Cabra Coaches show with the head ball coach, Terry Horan. Congrats on the win at St. Scholastica. You guys started slow down in the first quarter, but then you dropped 28 on them in the second quarter. Was it the case of just kind of shaking off the rust from that bye week, or did you make adjustments after the first quarter and then those started to click? Yeah, I just think, you know, for us, uh, you know, from an offensive perspective, I mean, Ben Blancas catches that ball over the top that was laid in nice in one of our first drives, changes the whole, you know, question of, the, of, of that drive. Um, and then the next drive we had, you know, we're, we're getting close into that red zone territory, and, and, and it was raining pretty good at that juncture, and I know... Uh, Coop wishes he had that ball back because he was just kind of, you know, arm was moving. It was like, no, 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 no. And the ball just kind of slipped out and they ended up picking it, all right? So we were kind of our own worst enemy there. So, I mean, things were there for us. We just didn't capitalize, which is something we need to do, which is the reason for that slow start. And then uh, being able to score right away in that second quarter and then got things going, defense, uh, you know, played really well at times too. I know Coach Bakken would tell you we need to finish better, especially when guys get some opportunities to get on the field. They need to, you know, showcase themselves and, and do what we pride ourselves in doing. Um, but also another special teams score, which is the third week in a row where we've either taken off points off the board or put on points. Um, and, and that came in that first half too. So that was a big second quarter for us. I was going to talk about the special teams play. Have they done anything significant as far as different scheming wise, or is it just guys just stepping up and making the plays when they need to? Especially like got kind of like a Ty Mosier and those people yeah. inside. Yeah. So, it, I think the biggest thing with special teams is you got to put time into it, right? Which is something that we do. Um, you know, all of our coaches that are tied up in the special teams, we work hard at it. Now, the the amount of time that you put into it is not nearly as close to your offense or your defense and that's every program across the country but the emphasis is there and the personnel groupings emphasis is there that particular play the wet ball had a lot to do with it because it went through the, pun the punter's hands and then we were able to collapse on him and then the ball was kind of slipping all over the place and then all of a sudden pops in the air miraculously and uh, junior superis uh, is the recipient of it, and he's in the end zone for his cle first collegiate touchdown. Uh, it was electric for sure. And then another, one, another play on special teams, kicker, Damian Silas, yeah. making tackles all over yeah, the place. Yeah, Damian Silas, well, one, he was 7-for-7 seven seven on PATs <laughs> at 100%, and then in our kickoff coverage, he came up and made two big stops, which... You know, we will say as a special team uh, unit that uh, we don't want our kicker making those many tackles, so we need to fix some things that, uh, that that doesn't happen again. But the fact that he's there to stick his nose in there and make a play for his teammates says a lot about him. Any chance you could put him on the defensive side of the ball? Safe, said, well, you know, safety. We could, we could probably give you a couple black shirt letters for that. <laughs> making you know, maybe Coach Bachman would give him a couple letters, but. Uh, uh, yeah, of course, and the, the sideline erupted when uh, any time a kicker makes a play, a punter makes a play that, you know, is not an every down type player, it's pretty exciting uh, on your side of the bench, that's for sure. Now, turning your attention ahead to Carlton, yep. this has turned into a really good series the last couple right. of years. Last year you split with them. Uh, coming into this game, they're a little bit newer because they've got some new players coming in. They had to return some over. What kind of a game do you expect on Saturday? Well, first of all, they're well coached. You know, Tom Jernell now being there six years, um, really have a lot of respect for him and what he's done with that program. Um, they they recruit nationally. They've got a, a lot of really good, solid football players. You know, um, and 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 he's got them back to. I, I still remember when I played here back in the mid to late '80s. Bob Sullivan was the head football coach, which the stadium's named after him. And he had his teams competing in the MIC each and every year. That's what Tom's got this program to be at. Uh, offensively, they're scary. They do a lot of different things. They they chuck the ball around. They got a very capable quarterback. Um, uh, he's athletic. He's a sophomore. He's got a good frame on him. He's got several weapons that he can uh, deal to. They only have one offensive lineman back, but the others work really, really hard. 
Uh, so they're moving the ball well. You know, they're averaging 38 points a game. They're, you know, about 59% of the pass. Um, you know, uh, they will run the football, so they are two-dimensional. But they have a lot of weapons, you know, and and um, and that's something that we we obviously gotta we gotta slow them down somehow, some way. Not easy to do. On the other side, their defense they play really hard, really hard. And and last year down there, you know, we had a few turnovers. I think there might have been six or seven in that game, and we still had capabilities of winning it. Um, uh, normally, when you have six or seven turnovers a game, that that, that score is pretty lopsided. Give credit to our defense and, and some of our special teams and making some plays then. But I know everybody in our uh, locker room would would love to have that game back. And but the, it's been a great um, it's been a great run with Carlton. I mean, very two competitive games, not high scoring games. They haven't been at least. Um, it's just been well played and both teams very well disciplined. But both teams that play all three phases of the game the right way. If you have to pick one, what would you rather do on Saturday? Third, defensively, third down conversions, you hold them to you know minimal third down conversions or no turner, turnovers on offense? Boy, if we can get that, uh, that offense off the field and we get th third down stops, that gets our offense back on the field, that's the one I'm taking. All right, finally, great article by Mike McFeely in the forum today about Gage Florence but he's ties to Concordia with John Florence, right. who played with you yeah. uh, back in your day. Just talk a little bit about John Getting Florence. Getting me teared up right now, <laughs> Lord. About playing with John <laughs> Florence, because he's he might be one of the last players to play both sides right. of the ball for Concordia. Yeah. John Florence will forever go down in my mind as one of the toughest players that I've ever played with. Pound for pound, one of the toughest players i ever played with. Um, he was a winner. Um, you know we have a we have our C in our locker room that is in in memory of John and in honor of John because he was all about the maroon and the gold and he was all about the Concordia C um, and uh, I'm just so happy for Gage Florence I mean he is lighting it up just a spectacular a collegiate athlete um, his really good high school buddy Jersey Selzler is our backup quarterback and those two are just super super tight. In fact, there's a picture of the two of us, um, John and I, high-fiving after a touchdown. I was going to ask you about, you actually had ups the, back then. Oh, come on. No, <laughs> we don't want to go. This is about John. This okay. is not about, but so did Florence. Yeah, you know, I was going to say, Florence yeah. was about, about three, four inches shorter than me, too, and he was up there pretty good. But um, Mike McFeely sent me a text saying that Gage Florence saw that picture, and he says, I have that up in my wall in my house. And uh, John, um, John, he, he's a pretty proud pop, and you know, I'm watching down on Gage because Gage is lighting it up. And and uh, Jersey, one thing Jersey said to me too, he goes, "I wish I would have met him." And I, and John was just, yeah, he was one of those dream teammates. And the kid went both ways when we had some injuries to our running backs, and uh, you don't see that anymore. Uh, this day and age where you put so much time into O, oh, so much time in the D, you just don't see it. But he was so cerebral. He was extremely smart um, and, and football smart, but also classroom smart. He was a dentist, went back to the hometown, Velva. Um, just a wonderful, wonderful family. I miss that guy immensely. And, but I'm, I'm Gage Florence's biggest fan. I love watching that kid play. Good luck on Saturday. Appreciate you. Thanks.